Voilà, voilà. Uh, welcome everyone for this uh, last session of this uh, quite intense uh, accounting otherwise fear lab. So just a little uh, wrap up for everyone here who, uh, just to give a little bit of context, uh, uh, accounting otherwise is the third uh, lab of the sphere lab season. It started with the Anarchive lab in uh, April, uh, followed by a crypto economic design lab that happened uh, two, three uh, weeks ago. And accounting otherwise is the last of the season. And it all started in a way with uh, Ella and uh, the the money lab uh, at the end of uh, at, at the end of march so it's kind of like the last iteration uh, of a series that uh, uh, you can uh, follow the development online uh, we have a youtube channel where everything has been filmed and i'm mentioning these other labs because i think it's important to uh, for, for understanding a little bit the context in which uh, we uh, have invited you uh, today so the sphere is uh, a, an attempt uh, at creating a cyber infrastructure for self-organization in the performing arts. It stems from the circus world. Uh, it has been founded by a, a circus collective uh, based in Stockholm, Salohanta and De Vilde. And, uh, and we're exploring basically uh, ways of organizing differently through the use of uh, DLT or blockchain technology. Um, so that's roughly the big picture. And uh, one thing is for sure, we're not uh, only interested in the technology. Uh, as uh, a friend of the sphere likes to put it, uh, Ruth Catlow from Further Field Gallery, culture comes before structure, and we strongly believe in that. And that's why we have uh, organized our three years deployment uh, around three axes. One is the Anarchive, uh, which is about dealing with the connection with performing arts as an art form. And how do we think of uh, the formalization and informalization of uh, the translations towards economic form, which happens more specifically in the second lab, which is about crypto economic design. And uh, we're really proud to collaborate with uh, Curve Labs, who are like the tech provider for the sphere. And we're developing a whole stack uh, that is uh, tapping in different existing technologies like uh, multi-sig wallets and a whole suite of administrative tools developed by Gnosis. Uh, we're developing also a, a model for quadratic voting for the partners of the sphere that is inspired by culture stake that was developed uh, by Fritterfield Gallery. Um, and we're also going to explore modes of financing through NFTs, but not the NFT that is geared towards a uh, market and an auction, but rather NFTs understood as digital souls, that is NFTs as organizational objects. And for that uh, NFTs here, uh, need to be fractionalized. So we're working in close partnership with Spectre, which is a, a new uh, initiative that uh, they're going to launch their newspaper over the weekend. Um, they leaked their newspaper in the game that we just played yesterday and two days ago uh, with Goldman Snacks. Uh, so it was a game uh, about a, 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 a LARP, basically, about trying to reclaim the land on which uh, the Tesla Giga factory uh, is built through uh, a fractalization of the land through uh, NFT. So that was kind of a speculative, uh, very playful way of starting to wrap our minds around what um, collective fractal ownership can be about, uh, facilitated by these uh, distributed ledger technology. And now, last but not least, um, we are uh, very, very happy, Yael and I, to uh, discuss more concretely what it would mean for performing artists to organize differently, maybe more effectively, or maybe with an eye with what the future uh, holds in store for us. Um, and and that, that idea that Yael will tell you more about uh, has germinated alongside 
a, a deep commitment that we have discovered uh, together while we were iterating towards this project around the notion of, uh, uh, I like to call it speculative generosity or uh, the type of ethics that is necessary for launching new initiatives into existence, the type of generosity that is needed for activating a, a spirit of the commons. So that part uh, about more like the ethics of generosity we almost discussed it this morning around uh, a text that we really like, an interview with Peter Sloterdijk about both the gift economy and radical taxation, uh, because at the end of the day, we're interfacing with public funding uh, for most of us. Uh, but uh, for, for circumstances uh, that are uh, uh, serious enough, uh, we couldn't uh, go forward, but we uh, are going to postpone it and, and invite you at a later stage for having this, uh, this uh, reading group. So I think uh, I said enough for contextualization. Uh, I let you with Yael. Oh, thank you, Yael. So Yael just yeah. shared the link of the text that we would like to discuss uh, at a later stage uh, mm. with you all. Mm. Um, yeah, so uh, Eric said already quite a lot. I don't know, I think that the, we are quite a mixed group in the sense of uh, uh, some people have more uh, kind of previous no understanding or knowledge about uh, the technological side of things. Some other people have a really, really grounded understanding of um, of organizational forms within the and care and uh, collaborative practices within the uh, performing arts uh, uh, work. And um, I, I kind of feel like it would be nice to just do, uh, there is also just to describe the structure of the event, how we imagined it. Uh, I will just uh, share with you the very simple prompt, a uh, very uh, kind of basic proposition that uh, we build together uh, an idea for a speculative design of a new institution, uh, an, a union, a cooperative, and a DAO. Um, I will describe it in a second, but uh, maybe we can uh, first do a quick round of just everybody saying a few words. There are a few people here with us that uh, will also be, um, that we also invited specifically to react to this prompt, which we, they will, uh, I think also say, maybe you can say that, that you will be also uh, kind of where you come from and um, what is your background in relation to this prompt? And, um, and, and then I will present the prompt. And then I think we're going to go into a 10 minute, 15 minute um, presentation of uh, uh, reactions to this. And then we're going to go into an open conversation, which we are all very, very much looking forward to and, um, and hear people's perspectives on this idea. Um, so maybe I can just, I, I, I will start by presenting myself maybe. I'm, uh, I'm Yael Sheril, I'm a curator of mainly non-object uh, based uh, art. So something between the performing arts, performance art and so on, working mainly in public space. And, um, and I'm based in Berlin normally. Right now I'm uh, actually in Israel. And as I said just before, and I just want to say shortly, I don't want to make this a uh, subject, but there might be, I might, I don't know, I hope not, but I, there might be like a situation of uh, an alarm going on because uh, there's, um, let's call it a war going on here. And I'm um, in Tel Aviv. Uh, and um, so I hope not. I hope we can just continue and I can kind of immerse myself into this reality for a second. Um, yeah, that's for me. And I'm going to uh, nominate um, maybe Ella, would you like to? Yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, Ella. I hope I hope it's be it, it will be okay for today. And I can really imagine that this must be a tough situation for you and everyone uh, with you right now. Um, yeah, it's um, I, I see people uh, that I have I have seen long time ago and others I wanted to see but have never managed and then um, also people I, I know closer. So this is really nice. I'm, um, I'm curious about the, the conversation we are going to have. 
So um, yeah, my name is Ela. I'm um, based in Berlin since 10 years. I'm co-founder of uh, Supermarkt. And uh, maybe in, in, in this little response I'm going to give, maybe I can tell a little bit the story of Supermarkt uh, and what brought me to, um, yeah, to, to thinking of organization, uh, of organizational design and modes of being and working together. I think this has become like a red thread in my entire life. And uh, yeah, of course, touching down on alternative economies and cryptocurrencies and community building this this has been sidetracks very important i see that as vehicles but like the main the major component uh, i see at least in my work is um yeah this moment of having recognized to educate myself about forms of getting organized and that started around the financial crisis 2007 2008 and I'm, yeah, I, I just want to um, talk a little bit later on why why these years have been so important and what's happened in my life and in my work. And maybe this can serve a little bit as a contextualization. And um, yeah, I want to thank uh, El and Eric uh, for your continuous work. And yeah, looking forward to the discussion. And I'm passing on to a person I don't know and maybe Matthias. <laughs> I managed how to unmute myself. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Matthias, and um, I know here only Peter. He invited me here, and um, I'm, I'm working as artist. Uh, I'm based in Prague, or around the Prague, uh, in Czech Republic, and uh, my interest is. I don't know how to structure uh, collectives or groups. Um, I'm interested in working with uh, self-directed groups as art form or something like that. Um, so basically, that, that's that's me. And for me now, it's really interesting to see, see this topic in a uh, this technical uh, aspect. Uh, which I'm not, I'm totally not familiar with. Uh, yeah, so I'm looking for absorb some information. And, and I am passing to Valentina. Hi, everybody. I'm Valentina. I'm joining from Lisbon at the moment. Uh, my background is in dance, contemporary dance, and in a way, self-organization. It's something that I consider as, you know, a base, a base of emergence. Uh, I have, you know, because I met Eric in a conference that organ was organized by Gerko, who's also here. <laughs> and I'm not, an, you know, I'm also new to uh, DAO or all the technical language, but I'm interested in thinking how this could be used for forms of mutual support and, yeah thinking together with you and I hope to learn something. And I pass it to UG McDonald. Um, thank you. So I, I'm here, uh, I was invited by Stefan and uh, I have an independent theater and film background and uh, I spend a lot of time coaching and teaching um, performers, actors, and sort of moving away from that into the more public sphere as well. But they were basically spending so much time on Zoom. Um, and I'm curious about the, I have technologically no idea on uh, any of the, the online funding models. Um, but I'm very curious about it as a as a, a way of connecting, um, because while the Zoom world is has a lot of faults, um, the ability of, to connect people from all over the world is incredible, and uh, I'm still really enjoying that. So I'm just here to to listen and to learn, and curious to hear more. And I'll pass on to. Uh, Pedroff. 
Ah, thanks. Thanks, Yuri. Um, well, I'm Pedro Vitor Brandão, I'm an artist based in Rio de Janeiro, uh, Brazil. And uh, in the past 10 years, I've developed a series of works connecting art and finances um, in a way to uh, grasp or to extract common values from these technologies. And uh, I was part of many collectives um, based here in Brazil and abroad also. And um, uh, well, I'm interested in, in this discussion because uh, we see on the arts in general or gen um, a very rampant precarity, um, especially here in Brazil where the public sector is completely destroyed. So I'm very curious to hear you all. And um, I think I'll pass on to Amilcar Parker, um, whom I invited also to uh, be present here. Thanks. Thank you, Pedro. You already helped me to introduce. Well, my name is Amilcar. Uh, I'm an artist. I'm based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I've been working with several forms of collective organization and work and different initiatives. Uh, my knowledge is quite rough about crypto coins or other ways of organizing, so to say, in new technologies. And my main interests are in understanding better how to produce and distribute value, uh, acknowledging the, 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 the violent and systemic and asymmetric uh, places within the world, how what we call art can contribute in a positive way to that. Uh, maybe you can uh, nominate somebody. Um, Mirna Abiad, I don't think she spoke already. Or if she... Hi, everyone. Do you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. I cannot put my camera on because I'm not in the right disposition. <laughs> um, I, I've been invited. I know Eric, and I'm very interested in all uh, the speculative, uh, speculative modes and uh, propositions. I'm a researcher and writer. Uh, I'm completing a PhD in aesthetics at uh, the University Paris 8, Vincennes Saint-Denis. And uh, I, um, my research focuses on the radical hope in collective experimentation within the expanded field of contemporary art. And I'm very interested too in decolonial futurities. So this is why uh, I'm interested in your, the speculative proposition. Uh, I was there yesterday uh, for the open uh, open part, and I was uh, yeah. And today I'm just uh, very intrigued by the Institute of Radical Imagination also. So I will pass uh, to uh, maybe. Uh, I just want to sorry, um, Dalia. Um, Hello, hi. I just joined, so I think I missed uh, the previous conversation. Maybe if I can have like a fast. <laughs> it's uh, everybody's. It's just an introductory round. Everybody is saying uh, like two, a few words about themselves. So if you want to say about your background, yeah. And, yeah okay. Good. And... Hi, I'm I'm Dalia. I'm yeah, a writer and uh, an editor, and I have been invited to this meeting in order to think um, a way to confuse you people and to, yes, um, engage with different way of archiving. So yes, I'm very curious to see what's happening. Dalia is our uh, unofficial minor and archivist for the current event. <laughs> um, we yeah if you can if you want to nominate somebody else to introduce themselves Dalia. Um, I want to know about Catherine.
I nominate Laura. Merci, Catherine. Hi everyone, I'm Laura. I'm a researcher based in Berlin. I'm a friend and collaborator of the Sphere. So very interested in questions of organization through with or without blockchain at this point. <laughs> and uh, yeah, very, very excited uh, about the discussion. And uh, I nominate um, Zigbar. Thank you, Laura. So my name is Sigmar. I'm uh, speaking from Brandenburg at the moment, <laughs> which is the countryside of Berlin. And um, then, yeah, and my background is performance and theory, philosophy. And I guess Yale invited me because I opened my mouth about the necessity of a union last, I think last mm, April. We had this conversation and uh, and it basically I think it came from um, hearing a lot about solidarity with the arts but also uh, inside of the arts or amongst artists and really uh, finding the discussion around class very very meager at the moment and still one year later so I'm super happy to be here to learn a lot I have no idea about all the technology technology that you're talking about <laughs> so I'm very curious to hear and learn more and I'm um, yeah I think maybe one more thing I've, I've also worked for about 30 years with workers representatives who like in corporate companies who are union organized or not union organized, but have a political uh, call, so to speak, in any kind of company. Um, and that, that kind of distribution of power and distribution of means, I think is something that is, would be interesting to rethink for the arts. And I nominate Anik or Marco, depending who's behind that image. Uh, it's, thank you so much. It's Anik and Legado, and Marco is here as well. Um, uh, we are very happy to be here. We are on holiday um, at the moment, and we are here. Uh, I'm connected and a collaborator of Eric, and uh, Marco of Emanuele, um, and it just shows um, how strong networks of solidarity are, I would say, because we came to each other separately, but clearly connected. Yeah. And, yes. And we uh, um, both, uh, what I, I like to call shapeshifters in that we work, um, sometimes inside the institution in order to um, resist it and shift the paradigm in which it operates. Um, so there's that, but at the same time, we also work a lot with um, different autonomous collectives, um, exploring uh, relational practices of an otherwise. And uh, Marco particularly works with blockchain. I um, have tapped, uh, kind of, um, tiptoed on the edges of alter economies and uh, we're really, really interested in this talk and um, may or may not uh, pop a bottle of really good uh, wine in the Langa region in honor of all of the wonderful work that the people here are doing. So thank you. And I will nominate, um, I don't know if who maybe, ah, Gabrielle, have you introduced yourself yet? Um, no, I haven't. Thank you, Anik. And uh, good to see you again here, <laughs> because we um, we had the great pleasure to work in the Anarchive Lab, um, and I'm also a, a friend of the Sphere and very curious. Um, I'm a visual artist working with performance, uh, installation, and video, and uh, I'm also directing manager of Campus Gegenwart, which tries to shift a little bit the institution. Um, 
It's uh, located at the University of Music and Performing Arts in Stuttgart and collaborates with the Art Academy here and the Merz Academy, which is more like an applied um, design school. And um, we uh, do now a, a workshop series this summer term and the lecture series the winter term and another event next year on the commons. So I'm, I'm very curious um, to learn more about it today. I will nominate Petter. Hello, thanks Gabriel, nice to see you again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm a Prague-based curator in performing arts. Um, basically what I'm trying to do is to consciously or sometimes subconsciously uh, create some structures that embrace the principles of care and uh, kind of, um, yeah, distributing the privileges and um, trying to kind of um, hack the systems of privileged art world to uh, let it be more open and bring more joy into it and uh, that they think that not seriously. And uh, in these conversations, I'm basically looking for uh, kind of expanding my imagination, how things could be organized, which I try uh, to implement it somehow into my practice. So it's nice to be here with you and to hear your thoughts. And I'm passing word to um, Emmanuel. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Um, I'm speaking from uh, Milano, and uh, I am uh, um, an artist and, uh, and curator and uh, researcher and uh, activist. Um, and um, yeah, uh, I am member of. Um, I, I think I am here uh, more because of uh, Institute of Radical Imagination today. Uh, that's a board uh, um, composed by artists, uh, uh, academics, uh, curators, uh, activists, uh, and it's um, was born. Uh, uh, four years ago, and um, the attempt was to create a network uh, uh, more uh, focused on uh, south of Europe and uh, the Mediterranean zone, um, putting together in a network um, uh, a big institution and self-organized uh, uh, artist uh, uh, communities, uh, mainly uh, rooted in uh, in movements, for example, uh, uh, in Institute of Radical Imagination uh, from Italy, there is um, um, Macau that is a, a self-organized center um, of act activist and uh, an artist uh, in Milan. Uh, I am part of, and then, uh, for example, uh, Sale Docs in Venice, uh, uh, Ex Asilo Filangeri in Naples, so that is also. Uh, in a way, a sister or brother of uh, Macau. Um, and from, for example, from Spain, uh, there, there, there is a, a representative of uh, Reina Sofia, but also uh, from um, um, uh, social centers in Madrid, like um, uh, Tabacalera or Ingobernable. So it's like a, a, a mix of uh, new institution for the commons coming from the movements and uh, uh, already existing a big institution that are politically committed. Um, and I am here uh, because of that, because we started the conversation with the Sphere and Eric uh, Bordelot, uh, because we would like to involve uh, uh, the Sphere uh, in order to update uh, the agenda uh, on how to infrastructure um, a post-capitalist uh, organization uh, motivating uh, uh, the, 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 the critique and the, and, and the analysis, but also the tools. Um, with Macau, we did uh, a lot of experimentation uh, in the last uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, uh, so how to infrastructure the commons with new technology. Uh, and so, for example, uh, we uh, 
we we um, uh, we did uh, like um, a design for the Macau organization based on uh, a social wallet, wallet uh, uh, in collaboration with Dine uh, and Marco Sashi uh, that uh, Anik was mentioning was part of. Uh, and then uh, we collaborated uh, uh, as a local node of this uh, fair coin uh, cryptocurrency uh, as a, a solidarity network. Uh, 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 globally, uh, and with them uh, we launched and we co-founded this Bank of the Common, um, and then we worked a lot uh, um, with Robin Hood Minor Asset Management and then EXA that uh, Eric was part of. Um, so, in a way, uh, uh, a lot of a lot of you are part of my kin or big family, uh, and uh, that's all. I would like to introduce and I invite to introduce um, uh, Jerko. Yes, hi, um, I try to make myself visible. I have really bad internet. I, does it work? Can you see me? Great, perfect. Um, yeah, hi, uh, great to be here. I'm um, Gerko, I'm a performance studies scholar working in Gießen at the moment, I'm based in Berlin. And um, yeah, I'm interested in alternative forms of organization and self-organization, knowing from, um, go from Montreal and since then being in conversation on these topics. Um, yes, so I don't know who else didn't introduce yourself. I think Heather, <laughs> I can go next. Um, I have internet problems as well. I'm currently in rural Saskatchewan, and uh, we've discovered that if we turn our video off, we can have slightly better. Um, my partner, Stefan, had to duck out of this meeting because we have two young kids who are just waking up for breakfast, so it wasn't working out. <laughs> so I'm kind of representing um, both. And uh, um, Let's see, so we were invited by Caroline Woolard to come to this meeting. And my background is, I'm an artist, writer, and teacher, but I'm more towards the facilitation side of things. And right now, Steph and I have a, a business called Working Together Consulting. The, we work in organizational development consulting and uh, things like social design, I don't like that word, but that's kind of where our interest lies, if we can find a better word for it. We had invited Caroline by a mutual friend named uh, Susan Basterfield, who we knew through the Liberating Structures community, um, to a micro sociology of group processes research group that we're trying to get off the ground. And so, uh, so I think that that's the connection, that's the web of connections. I am not a performing artist, I'm a visual artist, but um, I have dabbled in performance art and I'm just extremely interested in, in sociology of uh, group processes, like I said, and self-organization and things like this. So I feel a little bit of a fly on the wall right now, but um, especially since even though I was a media major, it was very analog time when I was in school. I know a lot about linear video editing. <laughs> which turned out to be useless approximately six months later. But I'm really stupid about all of the crypto stuff, even though people have explained it at me many, many times. Like I can just do some HTML, but when people do block talk about blockchain or crypto, I'm like, I don't know, I think you lost me. So I want to learn more though, because I know that it's just because I'm basically just an old dog who's having a hard time learning a new trick. I think no one else is going. I think I yeah. might be the last one. Okay. Yeah, I think we covered everyone. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, these lovely introductions. I would like to ask everybody to just post links to the organizations, projects that you've mentioned in your introduction, because I'm pretty sure that that really triggered a lot of people and would like to connect with you. Maybe would like to connect with you. So just use the chat uh, throughout the, the you know the conversation to uh, um, to just you know. Uh, post stuff that could be relevant um well so we're um just to dive directly into this um 
this gathering. The, um, the idea behind uh, this session is a speculative design project uh, that we uh, named the spoon uh, the idea of the spoon is because in the um, in the uh, i would say the crypto but blockchain uh, realm there is a term called forking which is uh, maybe some of you heard about bitcoin that bitcoin then like split into another kind of bitcoin and uh, basically it's uh, spooning is um, is a very friendly form of uh, of forking so it's a soft fork, uh, which means that it's um, it's basically taking some of the structures of an existing organization or what usually appears in uh, the crypto sphere as the white paper, adapting, taking some parts of it, but then uh, but then taking it maybe to a different direction. And uh, the reason that this project got this name, the spoon, is because I started a conversation with a Berlin-based organization called Laft, uh, which is an association which represents the independent performing arts in the city and uh, we've been uh, we are in constant uh, sort of exchange with uh, this organization this organization has a, a political uh, advocacy uh, role in the city very important in the general uh, cultural scene uh, not only locally in Berlin but also in the federal level and um, then we started to think about what would it look like if this uh, and it's a membership organization so people pay a very symbolic fee to become a member of this uh, um, of this organization and then we started to think about what would happen if this organization actually becomes um, a kind of union or a cooperative where the members actually own shares of this uh, of this institution and not only uh, and, the, and the institution takes on itself not only uh, political advocacy or cultural advocacy but also actually distribution of resources and um, and coordination between the members um, and so um, and so this is the proposition of the spoon and it's a very local context we are here a group of very uh, from people from all over the world with very different different um different uh, specific context in the art world that we're functioning uh, but maybe to give a little bit of the local context in berlin there is quite some as maybe probably all, a lot of you know, uh, there is quite some support for uh, cultural production, but that uh, cultural production is very much oriented towards project, uh, producing projects and, um, and like short-term funding and so on. And um, that creates a quite, uh, from my experience working in this, uh, in this context for the past nine years, uh, there is quite a strong sense of uh, competition rather than cooperation between the different individuals which participate in this uh, in this game, and um, and we and I had this feeling that we really need to relearn how to like uh, and there is a nice group that is called um, Social Muscle Club, and the idea in Berlin and they uh, they advocate towards like training our social muscles, and I had this feeling that the community here, the artistic community in Berlin, inside of the community itself, as uh, Sigma also mentioned, needs that kind of training, a training of like okay we are constantly fighting for uh, getting maybe better more funding from the government and so on but somehow on the on the path there um, the solidarity and cooperation between the different members of this community um, faded away or at least in some places that is um, that is the experience um, and i think there is a big emphasis in my in my own uh, practice on the on the um, on the subject of public funding, what does it mean to take public funding and then distribute public funding, you know, funding that is gathered through taxes, uh, and in Germany that is still a pretty strong institution, um, and, um, and what does it mean to be um, a receiver of these uh, public funds, but to be completely honest, I do think that also in the private sphere, uh, when uh, you're a receiver of philanthropic uh, money or even like in the free market, when you're an artist working in the free market, uh, the question of the comments, where, who, who are you surrounded by uh, is, uh, and how do you function? What is your, um, your dependency, interdependency with uh, your um, 
fellow artists is a really significant uh, question. In the performing arts, by the way, just another kind of uh, contextualization is that in the performing arts, the whole subject of um, intellectual property and uh, sales of art or, um, or generating um, income through sale of a work uh, is much less, much less present. And therefore, uh, it was also a good space to really think about this um, communality, um, co cooperation and um, com commonizing of the resources. Okay, uh, I, I think I spoke really quickly right now, um, but I think you got the, the gist. Um, and uh, so just very shortly to give an idea of what is this proposition, the proposition is to do a model project to um, collectively apply for uh, public funding here. Uh, you can apply for a sum of about 100,000 euros and maybe even more in, in Berlin and basically take that as a starting point to uh, gather this um, cooperative, organize this cooperative and uh, start to negotiate among this cooperative how do we want, how would we manage public funding if it was up to, um, to a, a group of collaborators, a group of uh, the commons. And, um, and the, the structure of this is not only a cooperative, so like the participants have uh, own shares of the organization, but also use the union form, which is a representative, representative represent, representational uh, uh, political form. And add on top of that the uh, decentralized autonomous organization um, possibilities, which means uh, introducing the automation that uh, that blockchain can offer in organizing these social contracts and uh, and kind of and 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 automatizing them. Uh, but I want to say to all of the all of us here who are not from the technological um, side. The blockchain realm offers really fantastic and super interesting experimentation in terms of the idea of value, how is value distributed and so on, but uh, it doesn't have answers. So all of the experimentations that we have, you know, in each of our practices have been doing um, outside of the crypto world uh, are completely valid experimentations when it comes to co-immunity, uh, care work, reciprocity, uh, and generosity, and so on. These are all very much necessary to be brought into the, the blockchain realm uh, and to really try to understand if this is at all uh, a possibility. One, one thing that I forgot to mention about this cooperative, the Spoon, is that the idea is that this uh, organization will uh, provide a minimum slash universal basic income uh, for all the members. Um, because the idea is that um, maybe you can produce a good project while you have the funding, but you can definitely uh, not produce anything when you cannot when you cannot be sure that you can pay the rent next month's rent. And um, and therefore the this I think needs to be at the ground of uh, this cooperative. And um, this is a proposition. You are completely free, like I would like like to invite now the people who we um, our friends to react on this proposition. You can completely break it down, criticize it, offer alternatives, whatever you want, do with it whatever you want. It's a starting point for a conversation. Um, and I would like to maybe ask, I don't know if there is one, um, I don't know, uh, Ella or Sigma or um, Valentina, if one of you wants to just jump in and, um, and uh, present your, uh, your thoughts. Or Emanuela, of course, sorry. Well, yeah, I, I, I can jump in maybe. So, so this is this is a bit uh, improvised, but nonetheless, you know, maybe we can engage in some collective um, contextualization of what what it actually is that we are talking about. Because I feel the the topic is far broader than simply examining uh, modes of organizing or uh, 
yeah certain practices in the art world maybe we can zoom out a little bit and 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 understand uh this this entire dimension and of course uh, i i don't think i have i have like the big explanation so you're all welcome to jump in uh i have to say i was always really interested in the the price and value of uh, cultural work so i started running cultural events back in school because I, uh, yeah, I, I, I always like to be a cultural producer and organizer. So that's what I do until today. And I remember very early, I, in, I understood that, you know, that people that uh, I invited for a performance or a dance, whatever, they did an amazing job. People really enjoyed it, but it was sort of like, it was sort of a given that they just earn a little bit because, and maybe this is a very German approach, they love what they're doing, right? So, I mean, they have fun, so they, they it's okay, right? So we, we, we don't have to bother so much about the money. It, this was something that was, you know, in the back of my head and I always thought, well, but why is that? You know, what's, what's the idea behind that? And I never had the feeling that a lot of people really um, uh, challenged that. And, you know, fast forward, uh, to my to my um, uh, education in art schools and universities, so there was a, another defining moment. I think that was the moment when we when we got trainings on how to speak in front of the camera in order to pitch our work, in order to sell our work, and this was a very much you know market related kind of of training. So this was really about presenting ourselves as or our work as products, you know, that that are easy to grasp and easy to digest. So that, that was in a way a preparation of what then awaited uh, for us. And it was the, the funding applications, of course, and, to, you know, to just learning to adhere to this to this system and the expectations that that came along with them. And then uh, another really important moment for me was was around 2009 when I uh, I had the chance to co-curate part of the Transmediale um, Festival in Berlin, and I decided to do a free culture incubator. That for me, I mean, it was basically the idea of an incubator where people uh, engage themselves in um, collecting funds for for artistic practices. So. This was uh, this was a, an early idea of uh, as much as there are incubators and accelerator program in the startup world, why isn't there anything uh, like that in, in in the arts and culture, and ideally self organized. And um, for me, I said before I started my whole interest around um, around organizing and um, collective and this whole idea of. Uh, of understanding uh, ourselves as part of a collective back in 2007 and 2008 um, when the financial crisis hit and I also uh, I had this understanding of um, that the, the world and the institutions that are that I considered myself as part of sort of yeah sort of started to crumble down and uh, a lot of so what what basically happened was uh, for me, it was some sort of an awakening that this increasing financialization really had uh, an impact on on our uh, on our work uh, and life, and this had many different aspects. So we we see new uh, protest movements such as Occupy Wall Street as a direct response to to uh, what happened uh, during the financial crisis, and I think a lot of the uh, activism and ideas and um, you know, creative responses that were developed in that time are still around and are still being carried forward by other protest movements. Um, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, this this entire idea of more horizontal patterns of organizing, patterns of collaboration that also emerged uh, uh, in, in that time. And then it was at the same time, of course, it was around the time when major um, platform monopolies were uh, founded, Airbnb, Uber, uh, they were founded around 2010, a little bit later. Uh, and th this also marked the beginning, the era of, uh, of, the, of the digital um, capitalism, the digital economy. Uh, we've seen an increase in the capacities of cloud computing. Uh, the data economy started to, uh, 
to to happen in front of our eyes uh and then you know this this entire what what um max haven called the crisis of imagination that that was also something that hit me a lot because i started to understand that uh a lot of what was happening there was also due to my own inability to imagine another world or other institutions or other ways of being uh, because uh, in order to do so, uh, I really understood that this was about unlearning uh, and letting go of certain beliefs and um, affirmations and so forth, which I, I, I think is, um, is, is, not, is not so easy. And then, of course, in that time, we've also seen Bitcoin coming up as a, as a response to the financial crisis, as a way of um, organizing money in a different way. So all these things that happened that led um, uh, that led us to uh, found Supermarkt. That was uh, was in, 10, in 2010, and for me, it was also it marked a little bit this steering away from cultural production more towards activism and understanding how organizations actually work or can work in in, in different ways. And since then, uh, at Supermarkt, we have been looking into different modes of organizing, particularly into uh, cooperatives platform cooperativism, but also recently um, into um, digital autonomous organizations, DAOs. And I have to tell you that I'm also not an expert in the technology, but I don't think that technology itself is what makes all this uh, really uh, complex. I think it's more, it's more the culture, it's more the fact that there is a, a whole new world to learn in terms of decentralized organizing, in terms of uh, um, of coming up with new modes of being together in terms of governing decentralized systems that uh, that expand across borders and jurisdictions. I think that's where the complexity sits. And that's also why, uh, especially in the artistic sector, um, I mean, it's it, for me, it makes total sense that artists really look at this situation and try to learn from it and try to build build their own systems. But at the same time, all of this is super complex. And I, I think there's a whole agenda of topics and skills that need to be examined and acquired in order to really um, to feel equipped in in spooning or building <laughs> organizations that Yael proposed, whether it's a union, uh, a cooperative or a DAO, doesn't matter or anything in between. We don't know yet. Because uh, what I observe here in Berlin is a, is a need of new organizational forms that um, of, of, yeah, of designing um, organizations that are not there yet. And they might even change their form all the time. They might even not be a constant thing. So yeah, that's just some very improvised thoughts from myself. I hope some of this is useful. And yeah, that's it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ella. That was great. Um, I think we will, uh, it, it, maybe somebody feels like triggered directly to follow up from uh, one of the subjects that Ella brought up. <clears throat> um, Emanuela, do you wanna? <laughs> Yeah, the subject is very wide, <laughs> and and um, um, yeah, uh, I have to say that um, uh, Eric invited uh, me to uh, to this to this room uh, some day some days ago, uh, discussing uh, about this. Um, this this article that posted um, in the chat, um, uh, the title is uh, the dream uh, the dream of income, um, and um, this is more uh, uh, um, um, a text uh, uh, on um, the political situation uh, in we are, in we are in, and. Um, I don't know how much is related to the self-organization schemes uh, and the use of new technology, 
but uh, I could frame uh, a little bit uh, uh, also connected with them uh, with this. Um, basically, um, when we worked uh, on uh, how to manage uh, in common resources and how to distribute them, um, we understood in the in the in the in the last decade uh, that in a way um, automatizing too much uh, uh, the computing, uh, the calculation, uh, the ranking system uh, uh, inside uh, our alternative institution uh, was, was a risk. Uh, and so, uh, for example, uh, we understood how to infrastructure more uh, tools uh, connected with uh, um, the, the solidarity as a gift, uh, not as a ranking system. Uh, and this is a point. Uh, so pra very practically, we understood how to comment and discuss common wallets, uh, then uh, how to have uh, the meritocracy to have access uh, uh, to the distribution. No? So um, a lot of uh, uh, withdrawal system were connected with self-evaluation and then discussion of line offline um, so because because for example uh, 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 commenting and using uh, uh, bitcoin or blockchains uh, 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 systems uh, uh, we understood very early that was quite um, uh, a design not for commoning but for uh, individual uh, competition uh, and so all our um, effort uh, has been how to use this, these digital tools, uh, um, ledgers, uh, and, and so on, uh, in order to um, not to recreate uh, a, a bureaucracy or a self uh, uh, ranking system. Um, this is one point. Uh, on the other side, um, and, um, and that's why, for example, in Macau, we designed uh, a, a self-generated -gener basic income for the community uh, in euro. Uh, so just to <laughs> be very practical. Uh, and, uh, but this was, was uh, linked to an infrastructure that was running on digital wallet. And so uh, we were able to understand uh, uh, what's the flu, the decision making. But in the end, uh, this was a, a way to visualize uh, uh, the value creation in our organization. And then uh, uh, we decided in the end uh, to let everyone free to withdraw whatever uh, he or she need. Um, uh, in uh, in euro uh, with a common wallet, um, and then uh, um, this article uh, I was mentioning, uh, the dream of of income, um, is also uh, try trying to analyze uh, uh, the fight uh, for income for universal basic income. Uh, we did uh, in, uh, in, in the last uh, years, uh, 20 years, I don't know. Um, and this is also related to a manifesto of art for UBI that with uh, Institute of Radical Imagination, we launched the, the last year. And also, and I, I post in the chat uh, the, the link. Also in this, case, in this case, we discussed with a lot of artists in Europe uh, and also from uh, US uh, in a certain point. Uh, and the result was how to promote uh, this culture of uh, um, a value distribution as a gift, uh, uh, not conditioned uh, and universal, um, both connecting uh, and considering uh, the two layers of uh, the government policies and the public money and uh, these uh, pilots or experience 
bottom up that are like inventing uh, uh, and practicing uh, the way to give up uh, with competition because also in our mind uh, we have to say in our community it's not so easy to commonizing value uh, to to exit uh, uh, Yael was mentioning this competition based on products and projects, uh, but also in, in a, a self-managed organization, uh, if I work so much for a project and then I have to give up uh, with the value produced uh, and maybe share with uh, uh, a so uh, called lazy, uh, <laughs> Uh, behavior of someone else uh, that maybe is simply empty uh, his or her time uh, is not so easy to understand this logic no uh, so uh, in our opinion uh, this bottom-up self-organized uh, alternative uh, institution uh, and circuits of value that are but that are training uh, bodybuilding, as Yael was saying, uh, no, this, uh, this, social, uh, uh, this social alternative, and um, a fight for the main uh, uh, policies by public governments uh, uh, in order to understand how to distribute this, uh, uh, for example, next generation U, uh, are a double layer that we have to consider. Also because, and I end up, um, in this moment, and this was the focus of this article, I think that um, uh, there is a crisis of uh, value distribution based on work, based on labor. Um, and this is something, I don't want to go deep in this analysis, but this is something that we are fighting for we, for example, the post-workerism in Italy uh, with this concept of refusal of work. And, but on the other side, nowadays, also the, go, the, 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 the policy maker, uh, the, the powerful the man and, and a, a human, <laughs> uh, mainly man, uh, knows. Uh, because uh, um, there is a, a problem of social control. Uh, if uh, there's no more enough uh, poor case power distributed uh, by work uh, is a problem, uh, is a problem of social control. Uh, and this was a system that in the better way is called Keynesian in the last century, in which in, in a way distributing power, power of buying from work uh, can feed the market. Uh, and then the state is a regulator with a welfare system in between the two. But this system is, is probably blasted or is is disappearing more and more. Um, and um, what, what, what uh, we are facing? We are facing uh, um, um, uh, a financing of resources. Uh, in, we, have to, we have to consider that in the last two crises, the one uh, uh, of uh, 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 10 years ago and the pandemic one uh, uh, we are in, uh, um, the monopoles of the capital are gaining. The fork is increasing. So it's not a crisis for them. Uh, and uh, and uh, on the other side, uh, there is a, um, a digitalization of, uh, of, of the bios, of the life. No? Um, and on the other side, uh, there is a, 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 di a direct control uh, on, the, on the access to resources. Um, and so in this situation, if we have a crisis, a crisis of uh, this model of distributing wealth through labor, um, for everyone, also for the policymaker, uh, there is 
uh, a problem that can be solved in uh, many direction. And I try to, to name three option. One option is uh, not to distribute any, any wealth, um, and, but this deal with um, a, like a, bid of, a bidonville transformation of the West. And this is a landscape in which we have like a little island of ultra luxury towns and more and more uh, like uh, a waste uh, social body uh, around that is no more so helpful in terms of uh, um, labor force. And this scenario is also connected with war because uh, with, with this scenario, many times uh, um, also the war, the war fair uh, is trembling uh, uh, aside. Another scenario that I think is the most um, probable is um, like this techno-optimism led by neoliberalism. Um, and um, also, for example, uh, in Italy, this uh, uh, basic income for citizens that we have um, is in a way uh, uh, connected with this uh, um, uh, uh, landscape, because in a way, the, poly the policy maker want to control more and more society, uh, ranking your access to income uh, to your behavior. So uh, it's not is no more like um, relate the distribution of income related to work, but on how you behave. Uh, and so this is the means to control the society through bureaucracy. Um, and, and, and this could be the more probable scenario that we have to face and that we have to imagine, uh, we have to imagine an alternative, I think, uh, uh, mostly related to this scenario. Also because China, for example, with uh, this social credit system is doing something very similar. Um, and so uh, data mining, social control, uh, bureaucracy for distributing income, uh, controlling your behavior is probably the, the future agenda. Uh, so that's why, for me, uh, if you want to uh, avoid war and a neoliberal social control uh, with uh, a social ranking system uh, uh, to control our life, uh, um, I think it's very urgent to uh, move in the direction of an, an unconditioned and universal basic income distribution uh, both as, as policies, uh, as governmental policies and uh, uh, pilot, piloting, uh, piloting uh, tr uh, a training in our uh, uh, self-managed uh, alternative uh, institution and organization that are able to imagine how um, to um, to distribute uh, uh, an economy based on gift um, within uh, their community. So sorry if I have been too long, but this was my point. No, th thank you, Emmanuel. That was uh, very much welcome. And there's a lot in the article that you shared the dream of income. And that was a very nice summary uh, of it. And it was interesting also how you landed with the uh gifting or gift mm -hmm. economy because this has been like a, a subject that we've been discussing a lot uh, amongst ourselves and uh, in, intuitively um, I feel like that in the arts you know we have this um, 
uh, I think Ella was mentioning it as well, right? It's like that artists are producing out of, uh, you know, it's we're enjoying to produce. It's, you know, it's just kind of like we're giving and the uh, offering, right? And um, how do you how do you economize that or what's the structures that you, you can, how, how can you keep the... Um, uh, the very fragile nature of uh, of this gift, this offering, this artistic offering, um, in an economic context. I do want to let uh, to invite Zygmunt and Valentina w- uh, to, but uh, Emanuele, if you just want to. Um... No, just just uh, just I forgot one point, uh, very briefly. I think uh, that it's also important uh, to uh, complete the frame, uh, understanding how grants uh, and public funding can deal with this piloting of alternative institution. 100%. Actually, this is really good, funny that you say it because uh, the grant specifically we were thinking to apply for with the spoon is a local, it's a, it's a Berlin uh, grant uh, that is actually coming from like the federal level. But it has, uh, like, it does look for internationalization of the project, and uh, and so it would actually be a nice way of hacking that grant to check to look at the cosmopolitical nature of such an organization by inviting immediately from the very beginning uh, in, in initiatives that are outside of Berlin and to play around with what would look like a local institution that is from the very ground already networked in a in a in a more international context. If I may add a little something on what Yael just said, uh, we're spooning LAFT. We had a very deep conversation with them, uh, with Yanina from LAFT. And it was very interesting in our research, this moment where they set up as a, a critical organization. That is, they are not part of the distribution of funding. They are just outside of it. And we feel like, one element of our proposition is to actually take responsibility for the distribution itself. And that's where the tooling or the self-bureaucratization of the organization matters tremendously for how is that uh, difficult issue of distributing a value uh, happening. So that's, that's one of the, let's say, one of the threshold or the challenges that we're uh, trying to, to tackle here. Yeah, Valentina, do you want to jump in? I mean, it's so complex. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how, but uh, well, one way, one thing that I was thinking about is that we talk about how to manage and distribute resources, but the question for me, it's like how to also produce and regenerate resources because the resources we have to share, it's built on somebody else's back. And also the way that those technology produce uh, wealth it's through extraction extraction from the land like this doesn't change so i don't think that if we don't take in consideration where you know how that wealth is produced that now people in europe we try to find some smart system to optimize it i don't want to think about it you know like that was the i mean i made a bit of a ridiculous map that i can share (laughs) just for me to understand like a little bit how to you know but it is a little bit, you know, uh, ridiculous, but I'm gonna share it just, you know, because, so I was thinking like, <laughs> so how do I understand the DAO, you know, the decentralized autonomy organization. So I drew like the image of a network as being the image of decentralization. There are all these nodes and points and then the myth of autonomous. So there are all these autonomous individual functions or tasks that are connected. Um, and thinking of the organization as a formalization. So in a way in which the exchange is formalized, but this is not how the exchange happens because it kind of, it's a bad drawing, but like it emerges from, you know, all those bodies, function, gift that are exchange, object, gestures, they are just the tip, the visible or formalizable point that emerges for this constantly re and decomposing matter. It's our, which I call there the undercommon. So not even the commons, but that which generates the common. And for me, it's like that is put in green because it's also connected to the social wealth. This is all grounded on social wealth. That's why, you know, the Uber, the Airbnb, 
uh, or that you could mine cryptocurrency in your basement, now you can't anymore, you know? So whatever thing we invent, it's fucked immediately, it's gone, you know? Because it becomes formalized at that level. This is how the exchange happened. You open your house, you get cheap money, you do that. So this is like this level of formalization without replenishing the social wealth. Like it's just, you know, it's a new techno feudalism. Like I don't see this as a revolutionary, beautiful technology. It's really a scary, scary technology that is just gonna, it's worse than capitalism, you know? And whoever owns the material power to, you know, mine the coins or uh, the social media, whatever, that's gonna, that's what's gonna, yeah, to what Emanuele was saying, also to measure and things, we're gonna reward your behavior or not. So, uh, and this way, so if we keep looking at it from this way, like how do we organize a better union or a better things, we keep reproducing the violence, which is a colonial violence fundamentally. That doesn't, you know, that doesn't change. So for me, it's like, if, you know, for me, it's like the way I can start to think about this, this is something horrible that is happening. <laughs> And, but it's, you know, it is happening, you know, it's like it's ignoring it, it's not gonna help. So if we, to under, my point, my interest in understanding those technologies and this tool is like, how, you know, how do we think non-extractive, you know, uh, uh, tools, or how do we think if we use those tools that are extractive, how do they also maybe regenerate you know, the social wealth. So it's really like, it might be secret organizations, ways of making like, you know, maybe making tools and redistributing it to communities that can self-finance themselves. Uh, really, you know, kind of like, as if like the nodes would be more like holes where the social wealth can leak back. So when we're thinking, when you propose performing arts, like I have no interest, like even if I'm a, you know, artist myself, to, I don't identify with the category that we have to safeguard because our work is so useful. Like, I don't care. Like, then I would put into performing arts any uh, precarious form of work, any work, because the only, and I was thinking what Ella was saying about, oh, artists didn't have to be paid because they have fun. I was like, then let's put all the things where you can have fun, you know, all the things that are enjoyable. Maybe it's a communal garden, maybe it's people that, uh, you know, uh, organize dinners for uh, homeless people, you know, anything that actually reproduces the social wealth that brings us together, that organizes study, that organizing coming together, that organizes reflect, you know, that supports this being art or not art, and not even having to be framed as art that now the whatever the movement work it would do now it becomes art, you know, like not in the sense, but uh, maybe there is a possibility of thinking, okay, we do a performing arts union to be able to get those money, but we're not gonna just figure out a way to monetize and uh, tokenize our work so that I write a text, you give me a thing, and then we, you know, we make that techno optimist scenario. You know, maybe we can, you know, rethink what performing art is so that we manage to leak as much money to people that. And maybe I make one performance, but I also use my time in ways that are more pleasurable than making art, which also becomes horrible when you do it in that professional way. And then you get sad, you know? So, uh, <laughs> you know, like that was a, a, a way of thinking because like, this is the only way I can start to think about it because otherwise it gets me really like, I don't want to have any good ideas because it's going to be taken <laughs> in a way, you know? <laughs> That, that was fantastic yeah um, yeah sorry i just want to I, I think i want to say that i really relate to i think that uh, the proposition of uh, the spoon integral to this idea is the um, the the um, like is to come up with a form that will um decompose after i mean it's really it's really an incentive to it, it it's meant to disappear this uh, i think this kind of union or cooperative but the ethical very... and political mandate it's central because i'm reading in the comment pedro is writing leaking back expropriate back 
if the colonial relation is like, for example, not acknowledge, just give everything back, give your money, give everything, we expropriate it back. That is, uh, a, you know, that uh, has to be part of, of those things. It's not just how do we support each other and are nice and make it. It's mm-hmm. like, we, the colon- this without a decolonizing mission, there's no, there's no goal. <laughs> we know what we're playing for. We know where we're putting our energy and our imagination towards. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think there is quite a lot, a few comments in the in the chat, but um, let's maybe just Sigmar, if you want to uh, jump in, and uh, then I think yeah. we're really definitely jumping into a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I was. I have a f- just a few comments. That, um, so. Uh, it, I can only think about it from a very situated place, like, and I think they're very, very different. Whether we talk about the the Berlin area, or whether we talk about a kind of a kind of this whole group, for example, that is intercontinental, or whether we talk about like they they require so many different ways of actually investigating this. And so I'm going to start from the very small Berlin-based thing which I think the, 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 the base of uh, kind of thinking this in a decolonized way is, a decolonizing way is, um, plays, plays actually, or is at play even in the, in the, small, um, in the small frame. Um, just as a kind of, for example, all the, all the money that has come up now uh, during the COVID, uh rescue funds as as funny as they're sounding um or this name is really weird but that's what they're calling it um something interesting started happening there where people started making projects or proposing projects that were basically a redistribution project and that is really interesting and that's something that um i i like i was dreaming for ages about um because I mean, we are in an incredibly luxurious situation in Germany where we do get federal uh, funds, cultural funds. Um, and the, the, the thing that you, it, it used to be you apply for money, you get 60, 70%. And then you have to go like, oh, well, then we just have to make it for less and everybody earns less money. Or you have to go and scramble up more money. And I was always saying like, why don't we, why instead of giving every application 70%, they give double, they give 200%. And the person who applies for their 100% is in charge of redistributing. So basically funding another project or many other projects that, are, that they know about. And this is not something um, that, will, that would actually create some kind of inner circle, because I think that's the responsibility you have uh, for, just from collaborating. I know that, that you, you, know, you deal responsibly with this money and you, you, you don't necessarily only give it to your friends, which also wouldn't be bad. But I mean, I mean I'm just saying that it's not some kind of, uh, let's keep it, it's not an inner circle thing. I really think it's an aleatoric funding system. Um, and something like this started happening now. The other, the other comment that I wanted to make is that um, we're talking as if it's the art scene against the neoliberal system, whatever. And I really, really want to make a point about this, that within the art scene, there is a huge difference and differences in plural. So the whole question of value formation is not only around what value is given to the arts, it's basically how self-evaluation is happening from within the arts practitioners also. And again, this is, might be a very German specific uh, way of thinking, but in Germany, if you can't live of your art, you're not an artist. <laughs> so everything that is not uh, people who have money from their parents, people who have a second job, people who um, are benef- like work with benefactors, 
they the, the, the value is not considered as equally valuable as if you were just on living off the art market. So this is the first conversation to have had is like who or what is art and what and how do we deal with that and why so it kind of plugs a little bit also or it has a, as it has a link to Valentina's last comment about you know it doesn't really matter what the project is really as long as it's it's an artistic or it's a way how to redistribute these things and how to gain a self uh, value um, from practicing rather than from who has funded this work the the third comment that i wanted to make is about um, uh, equality which uh, universal basic income is never about equality I mean, universal basic income gives a kind of base and then people can earn more on top of that always, has always, at least the, the versions that I know about. So that's, that's another thing. It's not about making everybody the same, but I do think it is something about having, uh, having access. And the, the, um, I have to jump back to the value question because I do think there is a conversation to be had about uh, for example, again, a very situated example, uh, in Berlin, the Berlin Senate <laughs> gave as the second, um, the second rescue umbrella, gave some, gave money out, 9,000 euros. And they actually called it a lottery, which basically any kind of art funding is a lottery. Um, because you can, you know, every time I get it, I think, oh, great, I got it, but that doesn't mean shit for the future. So, um, so this lottery then, who applies for this? And if we are talking about solidarity, is like if if I have if I know that I will always be able to pay my rent because there's always going to be money in my family, in my whatever that is is available to me. Maybe I don't apply for this. You know, maybe. I let other people have a bigger chance or I apply for it, I get it and redistribute it. These kinds of thinkings, there is a, there is a kind of, um, there is a, a value of precarity in the art scene, like to actually say that we're all precarious. It's not true, we're differently precarious. And so from, from this very small situated perspective of the Berlin art market, I'm thinking of the art scene, it's not a market really, but I'm thinking um, what would be, what is part of this, of thinking building infrastructure is actually really uh, building a, a collective public conversation about uh, what is the value, like where does the self value formation of art practice take place so not of the art product but of art practice um, and then and then the other thing is like what are these uh, yeah processes of redistribution that we know that we can expand and that we can build on or that we have to reinvent that we have to invent and implement and um, the third one for me, I mean, this, um, it's so, it's so uh, clear that it's not about what is considered to be art, because of course a community garden is art, like it can be, you know, if, it, if it's financed from that, it is, it doesn't, it doesn't fucking matter what it is. I mean, we've, we've seen that uh, very many times now. Um, so where, how to build sustainable systems um, f from both, from a kind of on the one hand, on a on a political level, and this is where I see the I see the political impact also of a union to have these kind of conversations. And on the other hand, it needs a lot of uh, really kind of you know talking with friends and colleagues uh, and and establishing a, the possibility to talk class within the arts. Um, sphere. 
and class differences within the art sphere. So those are the, the kind of inputs that I was, that I can give at the moment. And I'm curious to hear everybody else's voices. There's uh, really quite some, thank you so much, Sigma. Um, there are quite some really interesting comments in the chat. I don't know if people just want to jump in and maybe expand on what you uh, wrote and um, react and generally. I thought I shared just two anecdotes that came to me while we were talking, while they were talking. And thank you very much because it was incredibly rich, almost much, I need to take a nap. <laughs> but that's not just your fault. Um, two things kind of struck me. One is the, there, well, two anecdotes. We did a proposal for a kind of, I thought, cutting edge proposal for something. We sent it into a funding agency in the UK and we didn't, get funded which everybody has had that had that happen to them but what for some reason with this particular one i felt like these people had received all these amazing cutting edge fabulous amazing ideas not just ours but everybody's all of that knowledge was just like given away like gone it just like and i felt sucked dry by it it just absolutely i said i'm not doing this anymore I just, or whatever, that was my first reaction. And I just really felt, and I don't know why that particular one, or it was just the 101, you know, feather that sunk the boat, but that's one thing, one anecdote. And the second anecdote is a funding that we did get recently for a project um, with my organization called What If? And it's a lovely little project, tiny little project um, between Brazil and Holland. And they won't let us use the money to pay the artists. We can do anything else we want. We can, so we're gonna spend like an hour, two hours, 17 hours, you know, lying, saying we're gonna buy, lying. I mean, basically we are, we're gonna, we're gonna figure out how to consume, how to spend money so we get money for ourselves. And that just seems so false and so anti-ethical. Anti so those are my two anecdotes I just wanted to that are on my heart. And I think the heart is what we're kind of working with here. Yeah, Catherine, the, 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 the first example really speaks uh, to what we've been trying to uh, fix, address uh, within the sphere, like taking almost like a imagineering approach, but like, uh, yeah, there is there is maybe things to be learned from uh, incubator startup world, or maybe we need to start really taking things from another angle when it comes to uh, knowledge production in the arts. And indeed, uh, like very basic questions about like how the, the system is functioning right now, how the distribution is happening, what type of juries are, are being formed. Uh, everything needs to be uh, re-questioned from the ground up, I think. Uh, so yeah, thanks for this the, the freshness and and the event that you were uh, that you're talking about uh, with what if I think it's happening tomorrow, right? Uh, if, if if you want to say just a little bit more about that, yeah, I'd love to. Um, if you're not totally zoomed out, but this one you can go through Facebook, an even better place, right? <laughs> anyway, what if is an international research festival for um, interdisciplinary improvisation. And tomorrow we're doing a uh, uh, 12 country or 10 country, 10 to 10, from 10 a.m. in the morning in Berlin um, to 10 a.m. in the evening in Amsterdam. And it is a on Zoom live streamed on Facebook um, between Rio, Rome, Amsterdam, Berlin, Tehran. And it's just an amazingly poetic, very analog. It's not high tech, which is what I like about it. It's um, the image you have to actually see behind me or in front of me is a product of one of the things we do on Wednesdays every Wednesday. And it's a group of people that are 
Yeah, it's a good, Clarice is going to get up at 4 a.m. in Brazil and put her camera on herself sleeping because she won't be up when we get started um, in France. So uh, I can put the link in. You're welcome to come at any time during the day and it'll be live. It'll be doubly live streamed in the evening from 8 to 9.30 because we're invited to Exploratorium in Berlin, which is where we should have been physically, but we couldn't go. And there's a double a layer of live performers without an audience. The Zoom, something called the Tazware Atlas. I don't know if any of you know what that is, but it's a mind mapping way to look at documenting improvisation. Because what if main thing is asking the absurd question, can you document improvisation? So I'll be happy to share the link and thanks for asking, Eric. Thanks for sharing, Catherine. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a lot of questions. I mean, the, the, someone either uh, was uh, bouncing on the question of the decomposition. That's something that I really appreciated from uh, Valentina's uh, uh, diagramming because, and that's like at the heart of the, the great discussion that we've been having over the months with Yael. Uh, if I, like we talked about the tools that we're contemplating to use as a trigger for imagining other systems of co-immunity and, and care uh, for, for, for milieus. And uh, these technologies are about formalizing other uh, modes of value. Uh, like, like, let's be super clear about that. So uh, my previous work before being in the blockchain world and, and speculating on new financial formations was uh, very, I mean, I wrote a book called The Commons of Communism, which is uh, very close to what the under commons is about. So, um, I, th I think within uh, the arts and the academic world more generally, there's a, there's a, a, a discussion going on that is a little bit uh, not schizophrenic, but differential in the sense that uh, there is clearly a need to think how things uh, need to decompose and leak. I, I love the, the, the leaking back into the system so that value uh, regenerates, so that we're not simply composing or co-creating a system of redistribution of value, but taking the origin of value for granted. I mean, I'm 100% in. And I guess uh, maybe as a, a shared coordinates for everyone, the, the work of creating the new pipelines that will be leaking pipelines, you know, like the, the pipelines that will irradiate value differently, is what at the very beginning of this uh, crazy adventure that started in my case with Economic Space Agency, uh, we started thinking about anarchiving finance, anarchiving value, anarchiving finance. So there's always this concern of you want to account, you want to be able to account so that you can somehow be accountable when it comes to distributing funding. I mean, that's the bureaucratic part, I guess. And we still, I guess, or at least as far as I can imagine, we still need to somehow take up that responsibility. But if possible, I think, uh, I mean, I, I fully agree with the decolonial perspective here. It's you take up the part of the bureaucracy, the piping and the value packaging in order to make it leak differently otherwise. I mean, that's a bit like the accounting otherwise uh, light motif here. And, and in order to do that, uh, maybe I can share a bit of a, a little anecdote here. Um, uh, when I was still part of EXA in 2018, I gave a talk in Brazil, uh, in Campinas, and uh, Krenak, uh, he's a, a shaman and a thinker from Brazil, uh, he was present in the audience. Uh, uh, Viveros de Castro was there as well. And, and the way that, uh, I don't know how to put it, but the way that we try to approach financial matters as the white spirits of the West, you know, like the, in, in my position, personal position as, as a white man, dealing with finance might be the only decolonial thing that I can do, like making leak uh, differently. So that, and, and I don't know, like the, the work of doing it, it's, it's a pharmacon, it's a double uh, edged sword is we are learning with blockchain and distributed technology, new ways of packaging value. And that can go awfully wrong. Or we get in and we try to bring in as much knowledge and intelligence as we can in modes of, uh, of, of making things decompose as they go, to anarchive them as they go. Uh, but that's, yeah, I, I, I would say that's the biggest challenge I can imagine uh, dealing with uh, at the moment. 
Pedro, you want to say something uh, about that? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Eric, and thank you, everyone. Um, I'm pasting a little uh, manifesto from 2019 um, here on the chat. I, I won't comment because it's not safe to comment um, on Zoom, especially because it's being recorded, but it relates a lot about um, the back expropriation and uh, it's a very um, technical and poetical um, manifesto. And um, I think uh, sometimes um, when talking about crypto finances, we are all dealing with uncharted, uncharted territory. So um, it's pretty easy to uh, embed colonial thinking into it because it's like a no woman's and no man's land. And whoever gets first uh, makes the rules as in a, a nomotechnical uh, Karl Schmitt uh, Nazi style. So uh, I think what, where do, what we are doing in these kinds of uh, circles and um, meetings and uh, tokens is definitely to uh, build the uh, escape hatches to what uh, capitalism is becoming. I think crypto and, um, and also the metaverse, which is the, this universe where the frenzy of NFTs is taking place right now, it's not yet post-capitalist. Um, I think they are much more uh, vectorialist as uh, Mackenzie Ward puts, as in uh, uh, um, uh, the ruling class now is uh, the controllers of the vectors of information. Because, uh, well, as Emmanuel put, uh, there is a, a real crisis on uh, um, value extraction with labor, and uh, our information is being monetized uh, pretty much everywhere. So I think uh, I'm very interested also in um, information security uh, topics that uh, uh, might also create the conditions for us to uh, plan and to study with, uh, with um, safety. And uh, I think uh, I posted also earlier a link uh, for an experiment that I've been doing with uh, royalty distribution. And uh, I'm really um, uh, studying a little bit about solidity, which is the language and with uh, Ethereum is, uh, is built. And uh, it's a beautiful language, and uh, you can uh, definitely think of, uh, of solidity as a, 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 the, the lexicals for a financial legal where you put uh, different parts together to build little monsters. And um, I think it's really interesting to listen to you all and um, to see that uh, we are um, kind of in a, you know, to yet to establish a benchmark for common based uh, economies. So thank you all. I think it was just this that I, I wanted to wrap up. Thanks. Thanks, Pedro. It's super rich. Pedro has been uh, acting uh, in different ways uh, uh, in, in the crypto space since quite early on. Uh, so I really appreciate uh, your practice and insights. We still have a bit of time uh, and, and so much to cover or uncover and discover. Any Anyone else? Um, I have a there? small comment. <laughs> yes, uh, Ever, and then- Is that okay? Uh, Yes, yes, and yes. I, I don't know, earlier when I talked, my mic was dangling in my lap. I have no idea if anybody heard me earlier. I feel like it's really, really. <laughs> so anyways, I don't, I don't know if you hear me. Okay, now, can you? Have I fixed this problem? Is it all good? Yeah, yes. okay. Yeah. Um, I have just a small comment. I don't have anything complex to say about it, but while Eric was speaking a moment ago, uh, I couldn't help but realize 
that George Bataille's The Accursed Share is, I don't know if anyone's familiar with that text, but I, and I read it a long time ago, but it's always, always cropping up for me, but I feel kind of suddenly excited that I need to reread it specifically with the discussion we're having right now in mind, because I feel like it would transform some, I always felt like it was a text so far ahead of its time. So, um, but, and I'm going to do a bad job of summarizing, but it's taking a look at the gift economy and things like this through, and he examines it from an anthropological perspective. So he spends a lot of time looking at things like ritual sacrifice and potlatch and things like this. But I remember being super disappointed in the conclusion after several volumes of being, how can we get rid of our excess, our excess shares without resorting to war? And I remember feeling like oh, that was somehow an underwhelming conclusion. But at the time, I think I was kind of excited by the idea of more spectacular getting rid of excess. So I was like, oh, I don't know, that's kind of, that's kind of nice. It's too nice. Can't you have a less nice? But now I feel like suddenly it just really is like, okay, yeah, no, he, that was it. This is the whole thing. And I feel like a little bit in a way, what we're talking about here is how can, how could we self bureaucratize, which just feels awful. Um, without warring amongst ourselves, or I don't know, maybe that's too simplistic a way to think of it, but that's what's coming to mind. That's a really great comment. Maybe you want to uh, post a link to the text that you were referring to in the chat, that would be great. <clears throat> Ella, I think you wanted to, uh, to say something. Yeah, I just want to um, also hearing all your comments and thank you for that. So one thing that that is, um, it seems so obvious to me, but still maybe it's it's good to share it. I think there is no, uh, like there's no real alternative than trying to come up with UBI systems for artistic production and work because uh, um, what, what will not save us is an increase in project funds because uh, project funding is nice, uh, but you know, this is like, it's, it's just on, this is just the, these are our projects are the outlets of, of what we have managed to establish in the first place. And there's hardly any recognition of this art of organizing that makes up many artistic and cultural institutions, right? So just the mere fact that we are still around, we are there, we are continuing our practice, there is no recognition for that. And even though there is a, a project space prize in Berlin, which is, is already, a, a, it's a good step in the right direction, right? But it's still far away from any sort of uh, institutional funding. So I, I think uh, I, I can easily imagine that we will still continue, you know, all this grant application writing for project funds. But what is much more important is to secure our very existence by making sure that uh, that we will manage to create any any sort of uh, UBI system to just keep ourselves, keep our organizations alive. Yeah, and I think in terms of this, um, so I, I, I agree completely, uh, in, but I think in combining that with the Valentino, with your proposition of this, I think somehow if we can imagine these institutions to, to, uh, to uh, intrinsically incorporate the idea that uh, they're meant to be, uh, they're like self-destructive, so they, they are meant to be self-destroying like for example the definition of the performing arts arts generally you know of course using it as uh, as eric likes to say the pharmacon using the term i'm an artist or we're organizing an artist it's just it's just for uh you know it's it's for uh marketing purposes let's call it of this uh, project where it's clear i think uh to um where for me at least it's clear that it's just a tool in order to uh, to think about uh, societal organ organization or organizing, and um, and starting from somewhere, you know, starting to have the conversation from somewhere. Um, this is I just just uh, mm -hmm. you're very welcome to contradict me, uh, Valentina. I never know whether I saw that you uh, both. Are you both raising your hands, or is that uh... so? So it's it's Emanuele and then uh, Valentina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, some comments uh, on uh, the previous intervention. Um, uh, about the scal uh, scalability mentioned by Herrick, uh, um, I don't think, um, uh, I mean, in, um, I think on one side that scalability is uh, a way, um, a, ne a little bit a neoliberal uh, uh, um, keywords, uh, and uh, we understood uh, uh, in practice that uh, maybe not uh, uh, all uh, processes uh, has to be scalable. Uh, and um, many times uh, there is a, a right scale in which you can do something uh, and uh, is not uh, scalable. Uh, and you can risk uh, to to destroy everything or to uh, transform it uh, in a totally something else. Um, on the other side, um, um, I mean, uh, also on the on the keywords of uh, decompose or destructure or uh, whatever. Um, <clears throat> I don't, uh, also on this, uh, I understand uh, uh, the, the, the added value on one side, but on the other side, um, I also had in mind uh, um, this, for example, uh, also Deleuze uh, was uh, like, uh, uh, um, like warning uh, that a lot of uh, deterritorialization uh, uh, can be fascist, uh, for example. And we understood uh, in the previous uh, 10 years with populism uh, and damping down of uh, uh, um, this, this kind of uh, destructuring uh, uh, models that, um, I mean, uh, uh, is, not, is not something good in itself. Uh, and this lead uh, to um, a comment to Valentina, uh, because um, in my opinion, um, we have uh, now, if, uh, if uh, everything is not scalable and we are facing this pluriverse uh, alliances uh, in between uh, 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 actors, uh, schemes, uh, infrastructures, uh, um, I think uh, we have uh, to consider a tactical aspect uh, in which uh, uh, there's no scheme to solve our political problem, uh, to do an alternative to the actual production mode, uh, a unique one. Uh, we have to think that in a way, um, the, the political, uh, pretext uh, is very important and we have no no alternative that uh, uh, the power that we can generate uh, through this tactical uh, approach otherwise uh, I mean there is a, a fight we can win or not uh, but there's no res receipts <laughs> that <laughs> that solve everything um, and this was, for example, quite clear in uh, another reading, uh, interesting, uh, for example, the, the, um, the Prolet Cult by Bogdanov uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the Soviet uh, early times uh, um, uh, movement. And so the cultural hegemony that we can generate tactical uh, through our consciousness, political consciousness uh, is uh, a battleground. There's no, there's no scheme that can solve it. Um, and uh, we, can, we can surf uh, uh, this uh, uh, challenge for uh, uh, a counter-hegemonic uh, uh, power or not, uh, but this is, this is the field, um, and it's a risk to consider this problem solvable only by schemes. Uh, 
also for the decolonial process, we did common wallet for a rescue program in the Mediterranean, <laughs> but, uh, but only for political uh, positioning, uh, we did it. There's no reason. <laughs> um, and also, also the last point, uh, uh, the, the, the issue of defining what is art or not. Uh, I am totally against uh, to, uh, to, to define it. Uh, uh, I, uh, also because if I would uh, say something, uh, I would uh, uh, say that art is, uh, is this field of uh, more of rest, uh, uh, dream, uh, to be dreamed. Uh, this, this power to think an alternative, uh, this distance also sometimes. And so um, also the Bataille book that was mentioned, that was a critique to the uh, usefulness, no? Uh, <clears throat> and so this glory to be uh, not used, use useful for the actual produ uh, production mode. Uh, this is the field for art, uh, not uh, the luxury of uh, a, 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 a role position in the society. Um, so that's all. Yeah, I wanted to just add on the, because I agree and this like, and that's why I wanted to, when I was uh, nodding, no. <laughs> like sorry, wasn't meaning. Uh. Valentina, sorry, just I jump in yeah. uh, because it's, we're past uh, five, six, whatever time it's in your uh, uh, part of the world. Um, so uh, everybody needs to go. That's uh, oh. absolutely. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, but I mean, Valentina can can uh, wrap up and, and... Sorry, no, because I just saw also that people were also already writing that they need to leave. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm just like saying, you know, if you need to go, thank you so much for uh, sticking around. Everybody that wants to stay on, we're staying around. We, we, we I really want to listen to what Valentina has to say. <laughs> thank but you. just to thank say you, like, yeah, like, yeah, thank you so much for joining if you need to leave. Yes, That's yes. it. Sorry, Valentina, please go on. <laughs> No, I was just, I just wanted to uh, just say, you know, that when I'm talking already like the scheme, I don't think the scheme solves anything. Like it's really just a way to try to make sense. And, uh, and I think it's the, when I'm using the decomposition, the recomposition, it's to, it's not because I don't think it should be, I don't have any fetish of re-territorializing that and then we self-destruct and that's how we leak money. And that's like, I, yeah, not Spider-Man, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not, uh, I'm just thinking that there is exactly because there are all these different scales, there is different materiality to think, some things have to die, some things you technically join and it's at a national or international scale, like I'm, uh, but for that you have to understand also the materiality of it. And in the materiality of it, I also think not just how we re redistribute and circulate or administrate resources, but also what is the materiality that 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 this this income is being you know extracted from? Like where does it come from? So that we we have to attend to it, you know. Otherwise, and that's why the the colonial thing is not a whatever an ideology, but it's really like trying to how do you account for what has been extracted? So if you do it in Italy, of course you have to address the Mediterranean and what is happening because that's the you know. That's where the, the frontier is. So for me, what comes first is the ethical and political commitment, you know, and then we talk, you know, and then we can redefine because I would define the performance. It's not like, oh, now we make the dinner performative or the garden performative and we call it performance and we make it in the museum. For me, it's about the social wealth because even social income, even if you like the universal income, but with an, society dominated by Facebook where we isolate in our apartment. I don't want that, kill me now. You know, like uh, without the possibility to come together to determine the way to come together without having, you know, this possibility to deep social wealth with nothing. So like, and you know, like that's where we lose. So for me, anything, you know, I would call performing arts, anything that generates that 
could be the Bible study group or a performance or something, you know, whatever. But it's like, so that's, that's more like what I wanted to clarify. Yeah, I just want to add to the materiality, the relations. So what is the, like, that's where the situation situated and comes from. So I think usefulness is one of the things that has become absolutely urgent of the arts, not useful in the, in the capitalist flow, but useful in how, what relations and what sociability is and what the, the possible contribution is. So then exactly this thing of like, what is the specific materiality of the context you're thinking of, or we are, we are actually building for, let's say, or becoming active in, um, and what is, the, what is the historical, topical, social, political, ethical context of it, and what, is, what, what materialities does that generate? And then to see how the, how the, the actual infrastructure that is uh, being generated or being lived or being transmuted, how, wh how many different layers it has, like what are the strata that we're actually talking about? I mean, that's what, so it's a bit difficult to kind of speak globally about it because I do believe there is, it, it, like it can only actually function very, very situated. And there are some principles, of course, there are some ethical principles that need to be agreed upon or, or acknowledged, let's say. But the but how what it what, what how it manifests I think that's the thing that it can only be like specific and then and that the materiality and the relations will dictate the timing and its own temporality that's the, the you know the how, how for example even like how how do you communicate with within and without uh, bureaucratic infrastructures are they bureaucratic are they social are there are they uh, always actually happening in a second language, <laughs> which is not the native language of anybody? So what are, you know, what, it, what is the time that things need to process from one group to the other? And what are the desires that are present? Like I'm thinking very particularly of a, of a thing that is working, it's called um, Neighborhood Campus, and it is a garden project. And it's uh, and and it really like half the year is only about finding out what are the needs, how is the feedback loop, what are the loops that need to be that are already there as desires and as needs, and how can a contribution kind of reloop what is there and how what it can contribute. So that's the um, for me the. the um, how th that's also why I'm thinking it's so much of a language work that we need to do because it is about languaging and actually figuring out who is speaking this language with whom. I, I um, oh, sorry, Catherine, I think you wanted to. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I wanted to, sh to share what we, from the article that we were reading this morning, uh, I'm trying to pull it up right now, but I'm, let's see. Um, Andrew Carnegie said, who was an American philanthropist and made his money from steel, he decided to bequeath nothing to his children because he says that a generation, every generation needs a fresh start. And this is something I've been thinking about a lot um, and without knowing with whom to talk to about it. But I, um, and I think this comes from my improvisation practice and because I believe wholly that we, as much as we have memories and we have a possible future, I think we put so much stead in those memories and so much stead in the future that we forget today, right this minute. And, you know, today I'm really happy to be here, but at not, not but, I'm really happy to be here and it makes me want to like continue tomorrow. At the same time, I think we have to, I've always thought we just have to say, this is great, see you later, goodbye and accounting other words that the sphere doesn't exist anymore. And then tomorrow morning, I call everybody back and I, you know, and I call us a rhomboid and we do the same thing, but we start over and over again. And it's a way to exhaust us. It's also a way to, you know, go into another economy. And I know it has its, but I really, it's something that's been gnawing at me and it came, it feels like what we've a little, it's interesting to think about it because if we can do, if we can start over in a, in a generous way, 
I wonder if we can unencumber ourselves through language. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, yeah, that, that's uh, that's that's it. That, that's a huge uh, challenge. The, this feeling of um, uh, accumulation and, and loss uh, over I don't know over the years. I, this this question of the generational uh, transmission is is more and more uh, on my mind as well. Um, there is a chance, uh, at least uh, from our little micro institutional uh, perspective here, uh, if I speak from the sphere perspective, um, uh, the Institute of Radical Imagination is uh, holding, uh, is, is exhibiting right now in Hamburg, and uh, there is an event coming up next month, uh, if Emanuele you want maybe to tell us a little bit more, because I think there's like a very uh, lots of overlaps with what we're discussing. So maybe that could be another landing point uh, for this uh, emerging collective. Yeah, um, I'm curating uh, with Jersey Simurg uh, this exhibition in, in uh, MGK, is uh, the Museum for Art and Design uh, in uh, Hamburg. Um, this project called uh, uh, Life on the Planet or Simanirana. Uh, it was it is like six month uh, exhibition uh, in the museum uh, um, and our idea was to um, gather their um, artists uh, and uh, uh, activist collectives uh, in Hamburg and in Europe uh, in order to like uh, imagine uh, the planet to come uh, and so uh, there's different section uh, um, during the month. Um, uh, one, the first one is more uh, like um, um, a, a cosmological approach uh, to um, uh, the the relationship in between human and non-human, uh, and then uh, uh, a more um, queer and trans feminist perspective. Uh, um, on the social processes, and um, and then this all this alternative uh, way of production, uh, farming, uh, energy, and so on, and uh, now we are in a session uh, uh, that deal with infrastructure and uh, uh, decis decision making process, uh, alternative economy, and so on. Um, the idea in the end in July would be to launch. Uh, like uh, an archive of proposals uh, uh, for the planet to come. Um, on the 9th of June, uh, we are planning uh, to do uh, like a day, uh, like for the sphere today, uh, concerning um, um, yeah, uh, alternative economic space uh, and uh, alternative uh, infrastructure with new, new technology and so on. So more or less the discussion we are having today. Um, and discussing with Eric, um, we would, would like to have uh, as Institute of Radical, Radical Imagination, the project of the sphere and uh, probably also uh, Ruth Cutlow with uh, um, uh, for fulfilled. The idea, uh, and we have a meeting uh, the next week with uh, the Institute uh, in order to understand how to structure that day, but I would like to invite you all uh, and the sphere and or also to co-organize, I mean to co-imagine uh, uh, the day, discussing with Eric uh, being uh, in an art ex exhibition uh, would be good also to have um, like uh, an attempt to uh, visualize uh, an alternative uh, ecosystem of tools uh, that can be useful. And uh, I know that also you have a meeting um, uh, in the next weeks uh, in order to um, map uh, a little bit more uh, uh, the, the the ecosystem of tools. Bob, an idea of, of mine uh, uh, could be to have a discussion, uh, like around a round table, like today within us, um, and then maybe launch a session to as a call for design this map uh, of tools. 
that maybe could be useful for the sphere. Uh, it could be a good exchange, uh, and and maybe could be useful for the exhibition and Institute of Radical Imagination uh, to uh, keep going on uh, this discussion uh, we are having uh, there. Thanks, Emanuele. I, I mean, sounds uh, sounds like something that needs to happen. Yael, I think uh, we're, we're at the end of this yeah. moment. <laughs> that was so uh, condensed and amazing. Um, we should, uh, I should come up regularly with just completely um, um, preposterous propositions just to bring uh, all of you amazing uh, people, uh, which is basically what we do with art, no? It's like we come up with something, just come, come together and uh, let's uh, talk about uh, stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry, my brain got a little bit distracted because I just found out that my flight back to Germany was canceled uh, for Sunday. So my brain just went completely like uh, to a different place. So I lost my concentration for a second. Um, in any case, we will continue, I think, this conversation for sure through the sphere uh, and also um, with the developing and I think Emanuele we are I think there is an alliance there for sure that we uh, need to develop and uh, continue discussing and um, and I actually would like to really open it as uh, um, an invitation for anybody that feels that this resonates and wants to uh, dive into an experimentation around this kind of uh, institutional design practice um to to yeah to follow up i think really for now the best channel would be on the sphere um telegram uh and um and we will um right now there's no other i think um there's no newsletter list or um mailing list or something like that we can offer uh, i don't know if the slack channel is uh yeah no no the telegram is really. good and, and we can fork you know or yeah <laughs> we will. and create we will. another one exactly yeah proliferate yeah great thank you so much everyone um and uh, have a rest of a great weekend thank you thank you all <laughs> thank, thank you, you all <laughs> thank you all. Bye. ciao 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 also thank you bye bye <laughs>